In geology, permafrost is ground, including rock or cryotic soil, with a temperature that remains at or below the freezing point of water 0 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit for two or more years. Most permafrost is located in high latitudes in and around the Arctic and Antarctic regions, but at lower latitudes alpine permafrost occurs at higher elevations. Ground ice is not always present, as may be in the case of non-porous bedrock, but it frequently occurs and it may be in amounts exceeding the potential hydraulic saturation of the ground material. Permafrost accounts for 0.022% of total water on Earth and the permafrost region covers 24% of exposed land in the Northern Hemisphere. It also occurs subsea on the continental shelves of the continents surrounding the Arctic Ocean, portions of which were exposed during the last glacial period. The thawing of permafrost has implications for the global climate. A global temperature rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius (2.7 degrees Fahrenheit) above current levels would be enough to start the thawing of permafrost in Siberia, according to one group of scientists. Topic: History In contrast to the relative dearth of reports on frozen ground in North America prior to World War II, a vast literature on the engineering aspects of permafrost was available in Russian. Beginning in 1942, seaman William Muller delved into the relevant Russian literature held by the Library of Congress and the U.S. Geological Survey Library so that he was able to furnish the government an engineering field guide and a technical report about permafrost by 1943 year in which he coined the term as a contraction of permanently frozen ground. Although originally classified as U.S. Army. Office of the Chief of Engineers, Strategic Engineering Study, No. 62, 1943, in 1947 a revised report was released publicly, which is regarded as the first North American treatise on the subject. Topic. Extent Permafrost is soil, rock or sediment that is frozen for more than two consecutive years. In areas not overlain by ice, it exists beneath a layer of soil, rock or sediment, which freezes and thaws annually and is called the «active layer». In practice, this means that permafrost occurs at a an mean annual temperature of minus 2 degrees Celsius .4 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Active layer thickness varies with the season, but is 0.3 to 4 meters thick shallow along the Arctic coast, deep in southern Siberia and the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. The extent of permafrost varies with the climate. In the northern hemisphere today, 24% of the ice-free land area, equivalent to 19 million square kilometers, is more or less influenced by permafrost. Of this area, slightly more than half is underlain by continuous permafrost, around 20% by discontinuous permafrost, and a little less than 30% by sporadic permafrost. Most of this area is found in Siberia, northern Canada, Alaska and Greenland. Beneath the active layer annual temperature swings of permafrost become smaller with depth. The deepest depth of permafrost occurs where geothermal heat maintains a temperature above freezing. Above that bottom limit there may be permafrost, whose temperature doesn't change annually. Isothermal permafrost. Topic: <inaudible> Continuity of coverage. 
Permafrost typically forms in any climate where the mean annual air temperature is less than the freezing point of water. Exceptions are found in moist wintered forest climates, such as in northern Scandinavia and the northeastern part of European Russia west of the Urals, where snow acts as an insulating blanket. Glaciated areas may be exceptions. Since all glaciers are warmed at their base by geothermal heat, temperate glaciers, which are near the pressure melting point throughout, may have liquid water at the interface with the ground and are therefore free of underlying permafrost. Fossil cold anomalies in the geothermal gradient in areas where deep permafrost developed during the Pleistocene persist down to several hundred meters. This is evident from temperature measurements in boreholes in North America and Europe. Topic: <inaudible> Discontinuous permafrost. Typically, the below ground temperature varies less from season to season than the air temperature, with mean annual temperatures tending to increase with depth as a result of the geothermal crustal gradient. Thus, if the mean annual air temperature is only slightly below 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit, permafrost will form only in spots that are sheltered—usually with a northerly aspect creating discontinuous permafrost. Usually, permafrost will remain discontinuous in a climate where the mean annual soil surface temperature is between -5 and 0 degrees Celsius, 23 and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In the moist wintered areas mentioned before, there may not be even discontinuous permafrost down to minus 2 degrees Celsius, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Discontinuous permafrost is often further divided into extensive discontinuous permafrost, where permafrost covers between 50 and 90 percent of the landscape and is usually found in areas with mean annual temperatures between minus 2 and minus 4 degrees Celsius, 28 and 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and sporadic permafrost, where permafrost cover is less than 50 percent of the landscape and typically occurs at mean annual temperatures between 0 and minus 2 degrees Celsius 32 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit. In soil science, the sporadic permafrost zone is abbreviated SPZ and the extensive discontinuous permafrost zone DPZ. Exceptions occur in unglaciated Siberia and Alaska where the present depth of permafrost is a relic of climatic conditions during glacial ages where winters were up to 11 degrees Celsius 20 degrees Fahrenheit colder than those of today. <laughs> Continuous permafrost At mean annual soil surface temperatures below -5 degrees Celsius (23 degrees Fahrenheit), the influence of aspect can never be sufficient to thaw permafrost and a zone of continuous permafrost, abbreviated to CPZ, forms. A line of continuous permafrost in the northern hemisphere represents the most southerly border where land is covered by continuous permafrost or glacial ice. The line of continuous permafrost varies around the world northward or southward due to regional climatic changes. In the southern hemisphere, most of the equivalent line would fall within the southern ocean if there were land there. Most of the Antarctic continent is overlain by glaciers, under which much of the terrain is subject to basal melting. The exposed land of Antarctica is substantially underlain with permafrost, some of which is subject to warming and thawing along the coastline. <laughs> Alpine permafrost Estimates of the total area of alpine permafrost vary. 
Bachheim and Munro combined three sources and made the tabulated estimates by region, totaling 3,560,000 square kilometers, 1,370,000 square miles. Alpine permafrost in the Andes has not been mapped. Its extent has been modeled to assess the amount of water bound up in these areas. In 2009, a researcher from Alaska found permafrost at the 4,700 meters (15,400 feet) level on Africa's highest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro, approximately three degrees north of the equator. Topic: <laughs> Subsea permafrost. Subsea permafrost occurs beneath the seabed and exists in the continental shelves of the polar regions. These areas formed during the last ice age, when a larger portion of Earth's water was bound up in ice sheets on land and when sea levels were low. As the ice sheets melted to again become seawater, the permafrost became submerged shelves under relatively warm and salty boundary conditions, compared to surface permafrost. Therefore, subsea permafrost exists in conditions that lead to its diminishment. According to Osterkamp, subsea permafrost is a factor in the design, construction, and operation of coastal facilities, structures founded on the seabed, artificial islands, sub-sea pipelines, and wells drilled for exploration and production." It also contains gas hydrates in places, which are both a "...potential abundant source of energy." but also may destabilize, as subsea permafrost warms and thaws, producing large amounts of methane gas, which is a potent greenhouse gas. <laughs> <laughs> Manifestations <laughs> Base depth Permafrost extends to a base depth where geothermal heat from the Earth and the mean annual temperature at the surface achieve an equilibrium temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. The base depth of permafrost reaches 1,493 meters (4,898 feet) in the northern Lena and Yana River basins in Siberia. The geothermal gradient is the rate of increasing temperature with respect to increasing depth in the Earth's interior. Away from tectonic plate boundaries, it is about 25 to 30 degrees Celsius per kilometer (72 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit per mile) near the surface in most of the world. It varies with the thermal conductivity of geologic material and is less for permafrost in soil than in bedrock. Calculations indicate that the time required to form the deep permafrost underlying Prudhoe Bay, Alaska was over a half million years. This extended over several glacial and interglacial cycles of the Pleistocene and suggests that the present climate of Prudhoe Bay is probably considerably warmer than it has been on average over that period. Such warming over the past 15,000 years is widely accepted. The table to the right shows that the first hundred meters of permafrost forms relatively quickly but that deeper levels take progressively longer. <laughs> <laughs> Massive ground ice When the ice content of a permafrost exceeds 250% ice to dry soil by mass, it is classified as massive ice. Massive ice bodies can range in composition in every conceivable gradation from icy mud to pure ice. Massive icy beds have a minimum thickness of at least 2 meters and a short diameter of at least 10 meters. 
First recorded North American observations were by European scientists at Canning River, Alaska in 1919. Russian literature provides an earlier date of 1735 and 1739 during the Great North Expedition by P. Lassinius and K. H. P. Laptev, respectively. Two categories of massive ground ice are buried surface ice and intrasedimental ice also called constitutional ice, buried surface ice may derive from snow, frozen lake or sea ice, offace stranded river ice and—probably the most prevalent, Buried glacial ice, intrasedimental ice forms by in place freezing of subterranean waters and is dominated by segregational ice, which results from the crystallizational differentiation taking place during the freezing of wet sediments, accompanied by water migrating to the freezing front. Intrasedimental or constitutional ice has been widely observed and studied across Canada and also includes intrusive and injection ice, additionally, ice wedges—a separate type of ground ice—produce recognizable patterned ground or tundra polygons. Ice wedges form in a pre-existing geological substrate and were first described in 1919. <laughs> Landforms Permafrost processes manifest themselves in large-scale land forms, such as pulses and pingos and smaller-scale phenomena, such as patterned ground found in Arctic, paraglacial and alpine areas. <laughs> Carbon cycle in permafrost The permafrost carbon cycle, Arctic carbon cycle deals with the transfer of carbon from permafrost soils to terrestrial vegetation and microbes, to the atmosphere, back to vegetation, and finally back to permafrost soils through burial and sedimentation due to cryogenic processes. Some of this carbon is transferred to the ocean and other portions of the globe through the global carbon cycle. The cycle includes the exchange of carbon dioxide and methane between terrestrial components and the atmosphere, as well as the transfer of carbon between land and water as methane, dissolved organic carbon, dissolved inorganic carbon, particulate inorganic carbon and particulate organic carbon. Climate change effects Arctic permafrost has been diminishing for many centuries. The consequence is thawing soil, which may be weaker, and release of methane, which contributes to an increased rate of global warming as part of a feedback loop. Historical changes At the last glacial maximum, continuous permafrost covered a much greater area than it does today, covering all of ice-free Europe south to about Szeged southeastern Hungary and the Sea of Azov then dry land and East Asia south to present-day Chongchun and Abashiri. In North America, only an extremely narrow belt of permafrost existed south of the ice sheet at about the latitude of New Jersey through southern Iowa and northern Missouri, but permafrost was more extensive in the drier western regions where it extended to the southern border of Idaho and Oregon. In the Southern Hemisphere, there is some evidence for former permafrost from this period in central Otago and Argentine Patagonia, but was probably discontinuous, and is related to the tundra. Alpine permafrost also occurred in the Drakensberg during glacial maxima above about 3,000 metres Thaw 
The ground can consist of many substrate materials, including bedrock, sediment, organic matter, water or ice. Frozen ground is that which is below the freezing point of water, whether or not water is present in the substrate. Ground ice is not always present, as may be the case with nonporous bedrock, but it frequently occurs and may be present in amounts exceeding the potential hydraulic saturation of the thawed substrate. By definition, permafrost is ground that remains frozen for two or more years. Since frozen soil, including permafrost, comprises a large percentage of substrate materials other than ice, it thaws rather than melts even as any ice content melts. An analogy is when a freezer door is left open, although the ice in the freezer may change phase to a liquid, the food solids will not experience a phase change. In aggregate, the food thaws but does not melt. Melting implies the phase change of all solids to liquid. One visible sign of permafrost degradation is the random displacement of trees from their vertical orientation in permafrost areas. As a consequence, precipitation has increased, which in turn results in the weakening and eventual collapse of buildings in areas such as Norilska in northern Russia, which lies upon the permafrost. Topic. Effect on slope stability Over the past century, an increasing number of alpine rock slope failure events in mountain ranges around the world have been recorded. It is expected that the high number of structural failures is due to permafrost thawing, which is thought to be linked to climate change. Permafrost thawing is thought to have contributed to the 1987 Val Pola landslide that killed 22 people in the Italian Alps. In mountain ranges, much of the structural stability can be attributed to glaciers and permafrost. As climate warms, permafrost thaws, which results in a less stable mountain structure, and ultimately more slope failures. Increasing temperatures allow deeper active layer depths, resulting in increased water infiltration. Ice within the soil melts, causing loss of soil strength, accelerated movement, and potential debris flows. McSaveny reported massive rock and ice falls up to 11.8 million cubic meters, earthquakes up to 3.9 Richter, floods up to 7.8 million cubic meters water, and rapid rock ice flow to long distances up to 7.5 kilometers at 60 meters per second caused by instability of slopes in high mountain permafrost instability of slopes in permafrost at elevated temperatures near freezing point in warming permafrost is related to effective stress and build up of poor water pressure in these soils kia and his co-inventors invented a new filter less rigid piezometer frp for measuring poor water pressure in partially frozen soils such as warming permafrost soils they extended the use of effective stress concept to partially frozen soils for use in slope stability analysis of warming permafrost slopes the use of effective stress concept has many advantages such as ability to extend the concepts of critical state soil mechanics into frozen ground engineering. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ecological consequences. In the northern circumpolar region, permafrost contains 1,700 billion tons of organic material equaling almost half of all organic material in all soils. This pool was built up over thousands of years and is only slowly degraded under the cold conditions in the Arctic. The amount of carbon sequestered in permafrost is four times the carbon that has been released to the atmosphere due to human activities in modern time. 
One manifestation of this is Yedoma, which is an organic rich about 2% carbon by mass Pleistocene age lowest permafrost with ice content of 50 to 90% by volume. Formation of permafrost has significant consequences for ecological systems, primarily due to constraints imposed upon rooting zones, but also due to limitations on den and burrow geometries for fauna requiring subsurface homes. Secondary effects impact species dependent on plants and animals whose habitat is constrained by the permafrost. One of the most widespread examples is the dominance of black spruce in extensive permafrost areas, since this species can tolerate rooting pattern constrained to the near surface. One gram of soil from the active layer may include more than one billion bacteria cells. If placed along each other, bacteria from one kilogram of active layer soil will form a 1,000 km long chain. The number of bacteria in permafrost soil varies widely, typically from 1 to 1,000 million per grams of soil. Most of these bacteria and fungi in permafrost soil cannot be cultured in the laboratory, but the identity of the microorganisms can be revealed by DNA-based techniques. The Arctic region is one of the many natural sources of the greenhouse gas methane. Global warming accelerates its release, due to both release of methane from existing stores, and from methanogenesis in rotting biomass. Large quantities of methane are stored in the Arctic in natural gas deposits, permafrost, and as submarine clathrates. Permafrost and clathrates degrade on warming, thus large releases of methane from these sources may arise as a result of global warming. Other sources of methane include submarine talix, river transport, ice complex retreat, submarine permafrost and decaying gas hydrate deposits. Preliminary computer analyses suggest that permafrost could produce carbon equal to 15% or so of today's emissions from human activities. A hypothesis forwarded by Sergey Zimov is that the reduction of herds of large herbivores has increased the ratio of energy emission and energy absorption tundra energy balance in a manner that increases the tendency for net thawing of permafrost. He is testing this hypothesis in an experiment at Pleistocene Park, a nature reserve in northeastern Siberia. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Predicted rate of change in the Arctic. According to IPCC fifth assessment report there is high confidence that permafrost temperatures have increased in most regions since the early 1980s. Observed warming was up to 3 degrees Celsius in parts of northern Alaska early 1980s to mid 2000s and up to 2 degrees Celsius in parts of the Russian European North 1971 to 2010. In Yukon, the zone of continuous permafrost might have moved 100 kilometers (62 miles) poleward since 1899, but accurate records only go back 30 years. It is thought that permafrost thawing could exacerbate global warming by releasing methane and other hydrocarbons, which are powerful greenhouse gases. It also could encourage erosion because permafrost lends stability to barren Arctic slopes. Arctic temperatures are expected to increase at roughly twice the global rate. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC will in their fifth report establish scenarios for the future, where the temperature in the Arctic will rise between 1.5 and 2.5 degrees Celsius by 2040 and with 2 to 7.5 degrees Celsius by 2100. Estimates vary on how many tons of greenhouse gases are emitted from thawed permafrost soils. 
One estimate suggests that 110 to 231 billion tons of CO2 equivalents, about half from carbon dioxide and the other half from methane, will be emitted by 2040, and 850 to 1,400 billion tons by 2100. This corresponds to an average annual emission rate of 4 to 8 billion tons of CO2 equivalents in the period 2011 to 2040 and annually 10 to 16 billion tons of CO2 equivalents in the period 2011 to 2100 as a result of thawing permafrost. For comparison, the anthropogenic emission of all greenhouse gases in 2010 is approximately 48 billion tons of CO2 equivalents. Release of greenhouse gases from thawed permafrost to the atmosphere may increase global warming. Topic: Other issues. The International Permafrost Association IPA is an integrator of issues regarding permafrost. It convenes international permafrost conferences, undertakes special projects such as preparing databases, maps, bibliographies, and glossaries, and coordinates international field programs and networks. Among other issues addressed by the IPA are, problems for construction on permafrost owing to the change of soil properties of the ground on which structures are placed and the biological processes in permafrost, e.g. the preservation of organisms frozen in situ. Construction on permafrost Building on permafrost is difficult because the heat of the building or pipeline can thaw the permafrost and destabilize the structure. Three common solutions include, using foundations on wood piles, building on a thick gravel pad usually 1 to 2 meters, 3.3 to 6.6 .6 feet thick, or using anhydrous ammonia heat pipes. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline System uses heat pipes built into vertical supports to prevent the pipeline from sinking and the Chingchung Railway in Tibet employs a variety of methods to keep the ground cool, both in areas with frost-susceptible soil. Permafrost may necessitate special enclosures for buried utilities, called utilidors. The Permafrost Research Institute in Yakutsk found that the sinking of large buildings into the ground can be prevented by using pile foundations extending down to 15 meters (49 feet) or more. At this depth, the temperature does not change with the seasons, remaining at about minus 5 degrees Celsius (23 degrees Fahrenheit). Topic. Revival of organisms preserved in permafrost In 2012, Russian researchers proved that permafrost can serve as a natural repository for ancient life forms by reviving of saline stenophylla from 30,000-year-old tissue found in an Ice Age squirrel burrow in the Siberian permafrost. This is the oldest plant tissue ever revived. The plant was fertile, producing white flowers and viable seeds. The study demonstrated that tissue can survive ice preservation for tens of thousands of years. A 2016 outbreak of anthrax in the Yamal Peninsula is believed to be due to thawing permafrost. Topic. See also Global Terrestrial Network for Permafrost